Hello, me. My name is Max. I'm Director of Product Management at Starwind. And uh, our today's topic is NVMe over fabrics. So I wanted to start with differentiating NVMe and SAS to give you a better understanding where NVMe is better from the design standpoint. So what's superior compared to SAS? We've got two diagrams here showing simplified SAS and NVMe, just to point out the difference here. Uh, we've got our drives connected to a single controller. Each of these connections has one short command queue. And then this is coupled with the operating system drivers, which then use the CPU to process IO coming in from the application. Uh, in between, we've got a uh, point where RDMA network will go in if one is used, if we disaggregate our storage and compute, but we just dropped it for simplifying this diagram. On the right with NVMe, we have uh, pretty much the same layout. We've got individual drives connected to the operating system drivers through the PCIe fabric, and there is no dedicated controller here. Each drive has its own controller in this case. And connectivity from the drives to the operating system has a different comment set. We have more queues and each queue is much, much longer here. And then in the operating system driver, each NVMe drive is virtually like paired or mapped to a particular CPU core, which kind of became, becomes a service core for processing the IO. So if we try to distill this into just a few lines, SAS and consequently SAS-derived protocols like iSCSI and ICER, and if we compare it with NVMe and consequently NVMe over fabrics, SAS is built around old archaic driver that carries a lot of legacy stuff in it and stuff that's not needed for modern flash devices. Instead, NVMe offers simple read-write block device functionality with no burden of older technologies brought into it. Then the commands are different. Sorry, the command set size, I'd say, is different. With SAS, we have one short comment queue. I think that SNIA said something like 64 commands but it may derive from depending on the manufacturer. And the same goes with the controller. Controller faces the same issue. It's just one queue and it's relatively short because it was built for devices that aren't always ready to process. Instead, NVMe is ready whenever you are. And uh, controller is moved directly to the drive. And we have 64,000 queues. Each queue is 64,000 commands long. So what, 4.3 billion commands? for technically each individual device. And then access in SAS is serialized and relies on locks, whereas with NVMe, we've got namespaces that can be shared virtually. It's non-locking, non-serialized, so much easier to get a hold of certain NVMe region to work with. And with SAS, it's technically many to one to many because everything still aggregates on the controller level. And with NVMe, it becomes more of a point-to-point -point connectivity where NVMe on the host is used directly by the application. And we may only aggregate them at the top level because right now applications still need some sort of a software entity to put the NVMe's together to get one logical unit out of them. So, Obviously, NVMe is much, much faster just by design. And uh, to work with much faster storage, you need to apply different techniques and uh, do things differently. It's like race car versus a regular car. You really change things. So in our first target that we did for Windows, that is a native Windows target, so this means that no virtualized code is running bare metal inside the operating system. We <coughs> took some of the approaches and adopted them to get the maximum possible performance out of the NVMe. There were several 
things we needed. First one is to use CPU for everything. We had to switch from interrupt mode into polling mode. We had to sacrifice those cores because right now we can really do that. There are 40 plus cores on like an average system and there is just no problem with dedicating some of those cores to process IO. Another thing we wanted to avoid is kernel to user jumps when processing the data because that eats up a lot of latency. And we had to avoid context switches for that same reason. And because CPU is cheap, switching everything to user mode and leveraging polling should really help. There were some problems. First problem, no SPDK on Windows. So we had to develop our own SPDK-like functionality to get NVMe over fabrics working properly with good latencies and good efficiency. And another thing is that uh, since there are no polling mode drivers for uh, Windows, we had to make certain compromises. So we reduced the amount of data, uh, amount of like comments processed in kernel, but we didn't get rid of the kernel processing completely. And that resulted in slightly higher overhead than we wanted. If we talk about the architecture, pretty uh, simple here. Physical server running uh, Starwind and VME over Fabrics target on Windows. Everything uh, here is regular Mellanox networking. NVMe drives, in our case, it will be Intel Optane. And back to the target, as I said, it's running on SPDK-like functionality we had to develop to bring this to Windows. So let's switch to our demo and see how the first target performed and what was good about it. So what Max, is this showing like the data flow from the host to the device and then back? Is that, I'm trying to understand what we're seeing here at, under the hardware. So in this case, we see that uh, there is some, still some kernel processing yeah, uh, in the kernel level. So we wanted to show it to illustrate where we didn't get to omit the kernel in our IO flow. Yeah. So let me switch to Terras here, and Terras will show you <coughs> what the first target looked like. Hello once again. My name is Terras. I'm head in the engineering department in Starwind. And today I'll be driving demos for you. The rumors has it you like it, so let's have some fun together. Uh, that's a sample diagram of the hardware I've been using while recording the demos. Uh, we have two equal bare metal super microservers, uh, pretty equal from hardware point of view. The only difference is that the target side has the Intel Optane drive sticking in PCI Express slot in it. <clears throat> the target server is running a bare metal Windows Server 2016 installation. And there is a Starwind NVMe over Fabrics target, Starwind Virtual Sun on top, exposing the target. And the initiator site is the bare metal Linux CentOS 7.5 because there are no other alternatives. There were no other alternatives till today. So we were using the Linux one to show uh, both hosts are directly connected with Mellanox Connect X5 cards. We really love these guys and we OEM them into all of our hardware products. <laughs> so let's proceed to the demo. We are RDP into uh, to the target host. So Taras, the, yeah. the storage server was a, was a Windows box? Exactly. And the client was a CentOS box? Yeah. <laughs> there are no alternatives today, you know. You don't have initiator for NVMe over fabrics in any other operating system except Linux. That's, that's, that's the sad truth. And the Starwind oh, software is effectively the target NVMe over fabric exactly. driver running under Windows? Right. So that's the one we did. And obviously we have um, our core product, so we integrated along with iSCSI and ISER targets, we integrated the NVMe over fabric target into the same product. Right. Okay, I will try to comment quick. So we are checking device manager that the Intel Optane is present. 
and uh, yeah, we are formatting the drive in order to put our Starvent virtual image on top. That's how Starvent works. We are going to Starvent management console and creating a target. For those who are familiar with our product, it looks exactly almost the same as an iSCSI or regular. So we are specifying a friendly target alias and the port number the server will be listening to and the name of the virtual disk that we are exposing that resides on the NVMe card. Specifies the size, 200 gigs. And so this ends up being a um, software-defined storage solution as well as a VTL maybe? Okay, so there are two different approaches, right? In Starvent, it works like major hypervisors. You can expose the whole drive, the whole device as a raw device, just, just as a target, or you can format it in Windows or whatever operating system you are using and place virtual disk images on top, which is better from management perspective because if you have a large NVMe drive, you can create three or four targets for different reasons, for example. Names and, 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 yeah. and yeah. creating a namespace as a file in it's NTF as a file that resides in, in NTFS, NTFS doesn't yeah. But create a lot of latency? But we are writing directly to the storage. That's something you'll see in a few Yeah, and okay. working directly with the storage, there like are no overheads, <laughs> I mean. Okay, that's it. After clicking apply, we have target up and running. We see the status running and the network credentials we use to connect to it from, from the initiator side. So let's switch to initiator. Discovering the targets on the specified server, we can see the target is there. We are listing the block devices to see that no NVMe cards are currently present on the initiator host. And then we are connecting our NVMe or Fabris target and listing the block devices again to ensure it's there. So now we have a newly connected 200 gig disk device in an initiator and we start a benchmark using FIO obviously and 4K random write because who cares about reads anyways. So, <laughs> while it's People running... People who yeah. want hero numbers, that's who cares. <laughs> <laughs> we get, so the, the brief perform. okay, I will not spoil, Max will command it in the end, but uh, on our target we get something around 520k IOPS, which is pretty great from one host to another, from a single NVMe card. It's, it looks really good, really promising. Uh, we can see the HTOP running on initiator side at this time. So we can see the 10 cores are loaded with the FIO workload. Well, nothing special. You can fast forward, I guess. And, and the Starwind software is the target software running on a Windows server? You don't actually support, you don't develop the initiator? Is that? Uh, uh, it's, you'll, you'll, it's, you you'll, will you'll see. hear yeah. about Just <laughs> a, a, a bit of patience. Yeah. Wait, there's <laughs> more. Before I head Keep that right, thought. So right. on a Windows target, we've got on 4K random writes, uh, 518K, 520K IOPS which accordingly is like almost two gigabytes a second bandwidth with a latency For one at one NVMe device, two gigs per second? At, yes, with latency at 0 0.6 milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah, Max? Yeah, so let me comment on that a little bit. So this is what Intel advertised for the drive. I don't know where this number is coming from because probably they were trying to read from the drive and got something like 10 IOPS because the latency graph for the NVMe looks pretty much like a hockey stick. And if you, the further you go, the higher the latency. So we pu we're pushing the drive almost to the limits and that's why we get much higher latency than 10 microseconds. We're in 600 microseconds range here. Okay. You this don't is think the 10 microseconds is like a 4K read, you know, sequential read rather than like a 5 4K like random one, write. One. It's, <laughs> Why yeah. would you do more than one? All you got to do is measure just, one. Just right? read 4K and measure it. Yeah. Max, that, that 10 microseconds that Intel's been talking about mm -hmm. isn't for an Optane PCIe device. It's for 3D crosspoint at the chip level. And they then kind of yeah. don't. They kind of exaggerate things. Yeah. What you guys should do is Q-depth one latency as well as uh, saturation latency yeah. that you're doing. Because mm -hmm. yeah. Q-depth Q Q yeah. one latency yeah. is, is the device latency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we did the bare metal test with uh, pretty much the same Q-depths as the test Terras just ran. And we got 550K IOPS, which is pretty much what they advertised, but the latency was uh, around half a millisecond. The first version delivered almost the raw NVMe device performance. The latency was slightly higher. However, 
for that, the NVMe over Fabrics target eight, eight CPU cores alive. And uh, if we were a storage company, we would say, well, that's fine. We're not just a storage company. We have to share our resources with the applications running on that server. So eight cores, not good. In this case, the only thing we could do is to get rid of all those kernel processing. But the question is, how do you do that with no SPDK on Windows? So there is a trick to do that. And the trick is to get SPDK into Windows using some alternative route, Door. which we did. We just took a Linux virtual machine where we have SPDK, <laughs> mapped the NVMe and the networking directly to the virtual machine using SRIV or pass-through, whatever would work better. Put our target on Linux. We now have a Linux version. We can afford doing this. And we have 100% polling mode, 100% user mode processing, which is great because we just assigned four CPU cores to this virtual machine. So you are 100% user mode? Yeah. Very cool. And, uh, oh, NSRIOV, right. Yep. So basically just Hyper-V virtual machine in this case.